Hello and welcome to the garden. Well, we're approaching the end of May now and it's probably a, a sensible time to do another tour. So lots of stuff has been planted out in the last few weeks and well there's quite a bit to see in the garden now. Some things are doing very well, other things not so much. So I've got some problems with poor germination and I've got some problems with our recent weather. But let's start the tour here in front of the greenhouses with the uh, potato pots. These are the 35 litre pots of potatoes and they're in different stages of development because I've got first early, second early's and main crops here and also they were planted at different times. When I planted them I mentioned that I would be thinning some of them and leaving others as they are. So this is a pot of main crop potato Kerr's Pink. I didn't thin this one at all and you can see it's, it's really full of shoots and, and growth there. On the other hand those further back were thin so I just left one or two shoots on each tuber and the idea here is to hopefully get some larger tubers from, from those that I've thinned out. So my main crop potatoes here are Belle de Fontenay and Kerr's Pink. And I've got some more first earlies. This is Pentland Javelin. This will be a few weeks before it's ready. The furthest ahead outdoors is this one. This is a second early. It's British Queen. I've not grown this one before, but it certainly looks quite vigorous and healthy. Um, you can probably make out there that there are some flowers on it. So at this stage, I would expect there to be some small tubers developing but I'm going to leave these until they're rather more mature. I don't need them quite yet, we're still working our way through the smaller pots from the greenhouse. In the first of our cold frames we've got lots of spring onions and beetroot. There are very small roots forming already but it's going to be a few weeks before they're ready to harvest. Yeah, you might just be able to make out some young roots down the bottom there few weeks time and we'll be able to tease a few of these out and have some very young tender beetroot. I'm looking forward to that and the spring onions are doing very nicely here. Um, they're basically ready to use now so I, I will start to harvest those in succession. In the next cold frame we've got some strawberries. So far the results with these are rather mixed. We've got a couple of runty little plants here in the front but some of them are doing really well and there's quite a lot of fruit on a few of these plants. Now this is not the one that should have gone in the cold frame. I'd planned on putting garagettes in here. Somehow there was a mix up with the labels and those that were labeled garagettes are almost certainly Maling centenary. Um, I'm not 100% sure because Maling centenary just looks like a, a fairly classic conical strawberry but the garagette doesn't look anything like this and the one that had the label Maling Centenary I'm pretty certain is a garagette so I think there was a bit of a mix up with the runners but never mind this is a, a sort of early or mid early strawberry so it's okay in the frames here and Hopefully, if I get some nice runners off of the garagettes, I'll plant up the neighbouring frame with those in the autumn or the winter. In the other frames, the melons are just getting established. Melons are generally fairly straggly plants, and these are certainly no exception. But they look like they are getting their roots down okay. There's, there's new growth, and it's coming out quite nice and green, so I'm sure the old leaves will fade away quite quickly but the new growth looks pretty healthy so I'm a little bit hopeful that we'll be getting some melons later in the year. Well it's in these larger greenhouses that a lot of my effort has gone this year so these have got our grafted tomatoes and as you'll see in a little bit the ones that weren't grafted they're still a little bit ahead because of course the grafting sets the plants back a couple of weeks so the the spares the ones that weren't grafted um, they've got a, a couple of weeks on these yet but I think these are settling down quite nicely and, and so far I am pretty happy with these plants. So these are the grafted plants this is a pretty vigorous stem no sign of any problem from the graft union I'm not sure whether you 
this will show up on the camera very well but that's the graft union there you can just see some signs of sort of root nodules the, the beginnings of roots there and I'll have to keep an eye on those because they are very prone to rooting from the graft union and I don't want those getting into the soil but apart from that which is kind of to be expected they are doing very well I think I've got to come through here and pinch out and tie in once again. That's going to be a more or less weekly task now, I think. Down the centre of this bed, we've got some dwarf French beans. They're doing okay. I'm not, I'm not too excited about their growth so far, but I think as temperatures warm up, they should, they should start to improve a bit. And then on the right-hand side, we've got two different sorts of peppers. So we've got a bell pepper and then one of the pointed sorts. They're doing okay. Um, they look all right. There's, there's fruit coming on them now. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not taking off any blossom at this point. They are big enough and I'm gonna let them start to fruit. I don't know how much height we're gonna get from these plants. Some of them are, are taller than others. I think the pointy peppers tend to be a bit more tall growing. So I will, I will be tying these up and giving them some support later when they need it. But they look okay. Here's the last few of our 15 litre potato pots. I mean, these have been producing some really nice potatoes. Not large harvests, of course, because it's only a small pot. And we were tackling these quite early in the season. But these are going over now. You can see that from the foliage. So uh, I'm, I'll probably be done with these in, a, in the next fortnight or so and then hopefully I can start in on the second earlies outdoors which I think in, in a couple of weeks time should be ready to go. The peaches are putting on plenty of growth and, and there's, there's a few nice fruit on this one. This one is Belgard, it never gives us too much fruit. And I am thinking of replacing this possibly with a, a nectarine for next year. The black Hamburg grapevine is flowering away and we've got some pretty good bunches on this. I think some of them might have been damaged by the cold early in the year. The clusters of flowers were, were just coming out when we had some really cold weather and I'm sure some of them have been damaged but others look to be pretty good. I mean, this is, this is going to be a pretty impressive bunch I think. And as usual, Black Hamburg's quite vigorous and it's very generous with its bunches. So I'm, I'm sure we're gonna get plenty of fruit here. I will have to go through and thin these out later. Black Hamburg responds really well to thinning, unfortunately, because that is a bit of a chore. And I have to keep up with pinching out the new growth because I don't want any more growth here. Our other peach tree is, is laden with fruit. These look to be developing quite nicely indeed. This is an early fruiting sort. That's why they're um, so far developed already. There are one or two that are not going to develop. You can see that this is slightly yellow. These are no good. The tree has decided it cannot be bothered with those. But even so, I think we've got quite a bit of fruit here that is developing fairly well. The carrot pots are doing fine. Um, there, are small, there are small roots in these pots and I could start to use them pretty much at any point now. I've left them fairly densely packed. I will try to thin them out sort of alternate stations, but um, what I really want from these is just a, a handful of nice small roots. They're very tasty at the moment. We've had a few just sampled, but I want to leave them another week or two, I think. Well, one thing that's not been doing particularly well are my little basil plants. I'm not sure why, but they really haven't been happy. Um, I don't think they liked the potting mix they were in. Now I have moved them on and they're starting to pick up and some of these are looking a lot better now. Um, they were looking pretty sickly before. I have sown some some more and they've already germinated and, and I wouldn't be surprised if they don't 
overtake these and I'll have to see I, I mean obviously I want to get these in the ground in in a few weeks time and that will give us a, a good supply of basil when the tomatoes are coming on there's lots of action in the poly tunnel here this is some golden bantam sweet corn I do have one other variety of corn that I'm going to have to sow fairly soon but these are doing quite well one maybe two weeks and I'll be able to plant those out. These are my climbing beans. These could go out I think at, at any point now. They're pretty good so I, I will get them in the ground next week. Then I've got some dwarf beans here. These are bolotti and my chevrier beans have not germinated. Now they may yet appear but I'm not that hopeful to be honest. I've got at the moment I think at least three varieties um, different crops that I've sown from the same company that that haven't germinated so there's the chevrier bean one of my parsnip varieties hasn't germinated and then the Hamburg parsley doesn't appear to be doing much either so I am not that happy I really like the seed selection that they have but if they're not going to germinate reliably it doesn't really help that they've got lots of varieties that I like. The tomatoes in here are as I mentioned a fair bit ahead I mean this is a large fruited variety it's going to be a long time before this ripens this is red pear um, one of the Italian sorts it's going to be a very nice tomato when it's ready but quite a few of these have got a bit of fruit on now which is nice to see this one here is Pianolo del Vesuvio and what I've been waiting to see is whether this looks as it should and and yes it does um, it's got this quite distinctive pointy bit on the bottom of the fruit so um, I'm very pleased to see that this appears as far as I can tell to be true to type the trusses on this one here are absolutely incredible I mean the there's dozens and dozens of flowers on this. Um, this one is Blonde Kopfgen. It's a small yellow fruited cherry tomato. And I have grown this before and it was a long time ago and I remembered it. It produced um, quite a lot of fruit. Um, but I, I'm still quite amazed at, at these trusses. The recently planted sweet corn in here appears to be doing okay. It seems to be settling in happily. No sign of any problems. The dwarf French beans in here, they're okay. They're not brilliant. Um, I don't know why, but a few of these plants are looking a little, a little yellow compared with some of their neighbors. I might have to give them a little bit of feed, though I, I really don't know why that would be the case. What's not great in here are the aubergines. Um, I'm really not sure why. I they haven't enjoyed the cool conditions that's definitely the case they were looking really good early in the year as I was sort of potting them on and nurturing them and, and I think they just they probably sat in their pots for too long I mean these old leaves are more or less spent now you can see they're yellowing and, and I will take those off and the new growth that's coming through is looking a lot healthier this one I think will do okay. Its neighbor though is a pretty sad looking specimen. And then we've, and then we've got this scruffy looking bushy sort. Now I've never grown this one before. This is Turkish orange, so I don't really know its habit. Those large leaves are, are the old leaves and, and they are pretty much spent. So I, I, will, I will come through and pick off the old leaves. The new growth is coming through looking a bit healthier, but I'm really not convinced by these plants. Well, I think with the benefit of hindsight, if I'd known how cold it was going to be um, this season and, and, and how challenging the weather conditions were going to be, I would probably have sown those aubergines a little bit later. I think they haven't enjoyed the conditions so far and um, I had to get them out of their pots. I, had, I, I didn't have the space left to sort of keep them going in the propagators. So they, they, they went into the polytunnel. Uh, I think they haven't been too happy with the weather since they were planted. But 
as conditions warm up and they get their feet down into the fresh soil, hopefully they will pick up. There's some signs that the new growth is reasonably healthy compared with the yellowing sad old leaves, but uh, it's a little bit disappointing. So just walking along the border here now, I've got the seed sown onions. This is a, a mixture of different varieties and some are sown singly and, and others in clusters of varying sizes. They look kind of okay. Some are, some are definitely better than others. Um, hopefully I'll get some nice onions from these later on. Around the edges of the beds here, we've got lots of broad beans. So along the back, we've got the dwarf broad bean, the Sutton, and I think on the sides we've got the, ah, what we have on the sides is the wrong bean. Now, that's just not funny. The ones on the sides are supposed to be the crimson flowered broad bean. Now, somebody's been mislabeling the seed because that is certainly not crimson flowered. Um, I have no idea what variety that might actually be now, but that is a little bit annoying. Here the uh, Hubbard squash is hopefully getting established. Now this, to be honest, is one of my spares because its predecessor got absolutely trashed in the storm and the, the main stem was broken close to the ground. So I've planted one of the spares in and I've given that main stem a little support with a couple of canes so that it doesn't get thrashed around too much. And in this one we've got a butternut and a delicata squash and along the front edge we've got some nice looking lettuce. So this is the spotted coss or, or bloody coss. They've got a fair way to go to produce the, the heart that I want from these. Um, I mean, I could take them now and, and make use of them, of course, but I, I'd really like to get the proper hearts from these. The hearts from the cost lettuce are so delicious. Um, so yeah, these, these need another couple of weeks. And then further along, I've got some Four Seasons. And they're looking pretty good too. Here's one of the Allium beds. This has two sorts of shallots. At the front here, we've got Long de Britannia and at the back we've got the grey shallot. So these are doing okay. What I really don't like to see though, are one or two of them putting on a flower spike. This is not what I expect from the shallots and I'm not happy to see that at all. I mean those that have bolted like that, they are not going to store well. And I don't remember when I last saw something like that from a, from a shallot, from an onion for sure, but not from these. The weather this year has been really crazy and it's upset a few of the alliums. In this bed we've got garlic and then more shallots. Well the garlic is looking pretty good, I mean that's quite an impressive stem. Whether we're going to get some decent bulbs or not, I, I don't know. I think that probably depends a lot on the weather. The plants aren't looking entirely happy right now. There's quite a few yellowy, ropey looking leaves, but I mean, those are the older leaves. The new growth is looking reasonably healthy. Uh, I'm really hoping for some good bulbs this year because I was very impressed with the cloves that I put in here. It looked like some really good stuff. This is a at this end it's a French variety and at the other end it's Italian, but the French variety, the, the bulbs were huge and, and the individual cloves were really big and, and that's ideal for, for planting. So um, I'm still hopeful that we'll get some good garlic, but time will tell. This bed also has some grey shallots and garlic and various things, but at this end we've got the overwintering onions. And I think, well, a rather large proportion of these have also bolted. And this is more expected, really. Well, you can see, you can see them developing here. There's one and there's another. I mean, it's not 
it's not a massive problem. These are the overwintering onions, so they're not going to store that well anyway. And my intention with these is to really start using them. I've been picking out alternate positions where I sowed them more densely in, in places where I had some spares. But I think I could actually start using these onions in earnest now, um, especially those that I've bolted. You can see that they're starting to bulb up here and there's absolutely no reason why I can't take a few of these and use them in this stage. I don't have to wait until they are fully mature. I've got other onions elsewhere that I can um, hopefully rely on for storage. Oh, my poor Alderman peas were just starting to recover from the abuse they had early in the year with the, the cold temperatures and the winds. And then that storm blew in a few days ago and it's absolutely trashed them. They are all over the place. There are some flowers starting to appear, which is good. So hopefully I will get some peas, but I do not expect them to be particularly impressive this year. The poor plants are in a bit of a mess. What has been doing well in the recent conditions are the brassicas. They've really enjoyed the cooler weather and the plentiful rain that we've had. So at the front here we have Wheeler's Imperial. Now like a lot of the old varieties they are highly variable. So one of these has a really tightly packed heart already. A couple of them are looking a little bit loose but they should be ready fairly soon. And then further along we've got dwarf green curled kale on the outside and then we've got the Portuguese kale down the middle. To be honest I have not grown the Portuguese kale before and had no idea the leaves were going to be quite that enormous. They are really impressive leaves. So I could start harvesting the kale, well I think any time now. Um, start with picking the older lower leaves and just leave the centers to grow on. They've been in here a while now so their roots will be well established and I think it'd be better to start picking those leaves than to leave them to get old and useless. The red drumhead cabbage has gone completely mad here. Huge leaves, I mean these are so vigorous these plants. I know hybrid varieties are all the rage nowadays but I've never found the old varieties to be lacking in vigour. They're not so uniform, that's, that's certainly the case. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. I, I don't want all of my cabbages to come to perfection at the same time. That doesn't help me very much. I'd rather have them spread out. So some of these are clearly larger than others. And there's one over on the other side there that's quite a bit behind, but I think that's pretty much a good thing. At the end of this bed, I've got my first patch of rocket. And as you can see, that has flowered now. Now, some of those leaves at the moment, they're still okay to eat, but they will become coarse pretty soon. So this patch is more or less done with. I might hack it right back and see whether we get any decent regrowth, but I've got a second patch of rocket that is more or less ready to start picking. So there is something to follow on from these. Here I've got my bean frame ready to go. I've never built such a frame before. It is a slightly odd shape. I'm, I'm used to either A frames or TPs, but I thought this year I'd try something slightly different. And the idea here is to free up the center of the bed so I can plant the dwarf beans in there without them being um, unduly shaded. I think if I planted them underneath an A-frame they wouldn't do nearly as well. Well, we'll see how that goes later on. The broad beans that were thoroughly trashed early in the year by the, by the wind and the extreme cold conditions, they're actually doing pretty well now. They've, they've gone really crazy in the last few weeks. We've got a little bit of chocolate spot um, but that's kind of normal and I don't worry about that. And then we've got some nice pods developing. 
We've got lots of bumblebees here. I've, <laughs> I've, I've found a, a bumblebee nest in one of the compost bins, so we're not using that bin at the moment. But they've been doing a really good job on these, so I think we should have plenty of pods. The peas are a bit bedraggled because they've also had a real thrashing in the recent wind, but well, they're starting to flower now. And, and this one in particular, this is the purple podded pea. That is a stunning flower. Absolutely gorgeous. Prince Albert is also starting to bloom. Looks like we're going to get some pods despite the pretty harsh conditions they've had to endure. And then we've got some more lettuce growing between the A-frames and they're pretty close to being ready to harvest now. This is Marvel of Four Seasons. I've got five in there so I will pick out alternate lettuce and uh, leave the others to grow on a little bit. And here's some more bloody coss, and they're really highly variable in their colouring. The one at the end is, is covered in, in the dark reddish brown spots and some of these have got very few. Um, but again those will soon be ready to eat. One of the things we're experimenting this year is this new north border. So we haven't had a border like this in the garden before and we're just seeing how things are going to work in this space. It gets some morning sun at least part way back and it gets afternoon sun. The stuff that's planted along the front gets a lot more sun of course than the, the stuff that's near the fence. So we're just kind of learning how well this border is going to work for us. At the moment most things are doing I think reasonably well here. So we've got the second bed of rocket ready to follow on and I could start picking these pretty soon I think. There's some reasonable leaves on there now. The Swiss chard has been in the ground for quite a while now, so it's, it's been getting its roots down, but it hasn't really been growing particularly strongly because the temperatures have been so low. But it's away now, and particularly those at the front, they're growing faster, they get more sun, but even those towards the back of the bed are starting to put on some useful growth. And I don't suppose it will be too long before I can start to pick a few of those leaves. So along the fence here we had a row of tatsoi. We're about halfway through it. This is the last one from this section and that has just started to go to seed. Um, that was entirely anticipated. It's not a problem. We will get rid of this one this weekend and probably work our way through the others over the next week or two. More broad beans here. This is masterpiece. Now these seem to be doing okay. Those at the front are flowering a little more freely I think than those towards the back but even so it looks like we might get some reasonable pods from these. And this was my last planting of peas. So these went in a couple of weeks ago. These are Hurst Greenshaft. They seem to be growing quite happily. How well they're going to flower towards the fence I'm not entirely sure but at least they are growing away nicely now. And here we have an assortment of brassicas and I think without exception these are all doing really well. So we've got the black Tuscan kale here and then we've got some um, early purple sprouting broccoli, then calabrese and cauliflower and then at the end, the last thing that I planted here, um, we've got a dozen cabbages. I think eight of those are Copenhagen Market and four are Brunswick. So that's why they're a little bit smaller than the, the rest of these plants. They went in only a couple of weeks ago, but again, they're all looking pretty good. They've really enjoyed the weather lately, I think. A fairly late planting out of onion sets appears to be doing reasonably well. I don't think there are any misses there. Um, I still do have a few spares if, if I do find any, but I think they've all come up, so that's good. And one thing that's really been enjoying the rainy weather is the celeriac. And some of these plants are looking really healthy and vigorous now, which is great. Whether they enjoy it quite so much when the warmer, drier conditions come along, I don't know. I really must try to keep on top of the watering because these like moist conditions. 
The outdoor cucumbers that we're training up the trellis here, they appear to be doing okay. There's a, a young fruitlet developing there and down the bottom we've got our first proper cucumber. And at the speed at which these develop, I don't think it'll be too long before we can pick that one. So although the temperatures outdoors have been a little bit mean for May, um, these plants don't appear to be suffering too much. They were sheltered from the high winds and it, so they didn't get damaged in the storm and well, they're growing away quite happily. In the small greenhouse we've got an assortment of peppers and chilies. These are all in 10 litre pots and I think for the most part they look reasonably good. Some of these have got fruit on already. So this is the Goria pepper, the, um, the Basque chili pepper. It's a very mild one, um, but it's, it's a very tasty one. Um, and it's very nice dried as well. So yeah, this is starting to crop quite happily. I'm very pleased with those plants. This is a Padron. It's starting to divide nicely now and I'm sure we've got fruit in there. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the first fruits coming. So yeah, these are these are doing okay. On this side we've got Frigitello and yeah, there's some fruit set there as well. So that's great. Um, Lombardo. Lombardo always looks slightly sickly. <laughs> I think it's just because the leaves are always a, a slightly paler green. I mean, even the new leaves that are coming out on the, on the top there, they they are paler green than than the other varieties and from the moment they germinated they've they've looked just a little bit sad in comparison but they're they're branching out nicely now and they're they're starting to produce some flowers the fruit is quite a, a long thin one i think i think we've got a fruit set in there actually so i'm sure they're going to be okay but they they don't look quite as happy as the others but i think that's I think that is their nature rather than any problem with the plants. I may have to give these a little feed at some point. They're in quite a rich compost mix, but um, most important thing really is not to look at the, the old growth, but to have a look at how the new growth is coming out. And wow, that all looks pretty healthy. So, yep, so far so good. I need to keep an eye out for pests under cover, but at the moment, these plants look pretty clean. Well, my poor squash plants here took an absolute pounding from the recent storms. They look a bit bedraggled, quite a few damaged leaves, but I think they will recover from that. They're gonna be okay, I'm sure. The courgettes are doing okay. We've got the male flowers just about to open here, and the first of the fruits is just starting to show up so I'm sure these will be all right so the squash plants that are growing up the trellis well they're okay I mean the growing tips are fine that's the most important thing um, there's no substantial damage I mean the leaves have been crushed and whipped around there are some one or two broken stems but they're going to be perfectly okay I think um, if it weren't for those really high winds, these would be looking nice, I'm sure, but yeah, they, they really did get whipped about here. Well, you can see there's some more damage on these leaves, um, and we've lost one of the lower leaves here. But the growing tip hiding away, that is still fine with a young fruitlet there. And we do have a fruit that well, it looks as though it might actually have set. Um, I'm not entirely sure what pollinated it. There haven't been that many male flowers open recently, but you know, perhaps we've got lucky and that could be the, the first fruit. I would have thought if it wasn't pollinated, this would, this would not be developing as much as it has. So yeah, could be our first Delicata squash. Earlier in the year, I was worried about damage to the pear blossom from the cold. And well, you can see that some of these have set 
um, perfectly good looking fruit, whilst others, well, that's a disaster. Um, and we've got quite a few like that, and I'm sure that is the frost damage. Um, you can see on here, there's more of that. And then we've got some like this one, which are just misshapen. This one here is kind of scarred across there. Again, it's, it's misshapen. So I've got to go through these trees and thin out the damaged and, and misshapen fruits. I might do that just a little bit later. It's, it's, it's probably a little bit easier when they've, when they've grown a little bit and I can see which ones of them are, are developing as they should. So this bed has some sort of loose leaf lettuce and then some beetroot plants. Now these went into the ground at exactly the same time as those in the cold frames. But of course they've been experiencing some pretty mean temperatures out here. So that's why they're a long way behind. But that's really a good thing. I don't want them all to crop at the same time. That doesn't really help me. But um, we're getting some pickings off of the lettuce. And I think we've got a couple of weeks yet to pick that before it starts to get in the way of the developing beetroot. So at this end we've got some parsley plants. They're starting to grow away really nicely now. I think here we've mostly got weed. Um, this is where we should have some Hamburg parsley. And I think one or two may have come through, but really very little. So that's very disappointing. Further up, I can see we've got some carrots coming through and I'll have to go in here and weed this bed out and I think at some point thin the carrots. This bed is a really weedy nightmare, but those there are, I'm pretty sure, the parsnips. And they certainly look like it and they're in the right place. And the rest of this stuff is weed. I have no idea why we've got quite so much weed. It is shocking. But once the parsnips are pretty clear, I can get in here and um, weed out everything else. Now the parsnips have germinated, I think, reasonably well for two varieties. The third variety, as I mentioned earlier, it's not germinated at all. So I will have to re-sow some of these. The fruit cage is coming along now. The current bushes are getting established and at the end we've got some strawberries. The five sweet cherries growing along the fence are looking okay. Down the middle, we may have a bit of a problem. So I planted these with raspberry canes in the winter and the first two have come up. Not every cane, there's one or two misses, but I think that's quite normal. They are a little tricky to get established. Um, but I think these two beds are gonna be fine. But then nothing. Um, this is another summer fruiting raspberry and not a single one of these has developed. And then at the end, we've got an autumn fruiting sort. This is Joan Jay. Well, these had very impressive root systems, but again, there's no sign of any new growth. So I am a little bit concerned by these. It has been cold and miserable and I think there's just a possibility that they are rather behind. It is really strange that two of the varieties are up and away and two of them haven't done anything. There was, there's, there's no reason I can think of for these two not to have developed. So I'm beginning to think at this late stage that these are a bust, in which case I'm just gonna to have to wait until winter to have another go. So that will be rather disappointing. Most of the fruit that I've put in this winter have been bare root, but of course the blueberries have been uh, potted specimens and they're doing quite well, really. They are covered in berries and, and I hadn't really anticipated too much from these. These were flowering during the really cold part of the year and and I assumed that we would lose most of these but yeah, it looks like plenty of set and we've moved the strawberry pots outdoors now these were in the greenhouses for quite a while and as you can see there's well there's a few nice fruits developing 
I don't think the crop's going to be particularly impressive this year, but these are new crowns and hopefully I will get a, a rather more impressive crop next year. Again, these took a real pounding from the high winds. I've got them covered with a little bit of mesh now just to keep the birds off of that ripening fruit. The young apricot tree is doing very nicely. I've got two side shoots here which are going to be great for fan draining. This one at the back, um, which is growing vertically, I will be taking that one off. But I, I deliberately left this so this would be a vigorous shoot and would allow these other two to develop at rather more gentle angles and with a bit less vigour. So I need to get some wires on the wall here and then I can tie these in and cut this, cut this leader out. Well here we've had a bit of a disaster. So in a recent video I showed how we planted up this old bathtub with some squash plants and some melons at the front. Well as you can imagine they did not appreciate the recent storm. Um, these took a huge battering as you can see from the state of the leaves. Now on the sides we've got some butternut squash and okay the leaves are damaged but the growing point is still intact. In fact we've got the first female flower starting to appear and yeah these, these will I'm sure be perfectly okay. This one in the middle which was a wonderful vigorous looking fellow is now looking thoroughly beaten. So these old leaves obviously are quite badly damaged and here we've lost the growing point. So this was up, 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 up here somewhere and that's been snapped off. So that's a pity but it, it's not a complete disaster because lower down we've got the start of some side shoots. We've got one coming up here and then we've got one from lower down. So I'll simply take these side shoots on up and later on I can cut this broken piece out. I'll leave it at the moment, there's not too much leaf area on this. But, but the new leaves will come through and it will grow through this damage without too much trouble. Well that is it for the tour here at the end of May. It's certainly been a challenging start to the season. The weather has not been particularly kind this year. So there are lots of things that are doing reasonably well and I'm, I'm pretty happy under the circumstances. There are some things that have been struggling with the conditions, the, the cooler conditions, some of the plants that have been held back and now are struggling to get established properly. Um, there are also a few things that have taken a pounding from the weather and I've had some dodgy germination from some of the seeds but even so I think under the circumstances I'm reasonably content with the kitchen garden as it stands. But anyway that is all for this video so thanks very much for watching and bye for now.